Hello there, it's Jay here from Jay's Vintage Junk, and today I thought we'd uh, carry on with the little um, Sinclair uh, power amplifier project. Now, first off, I will say I, in the last video I, uh, I said I thought this thing was perhaps only a watt or two. Uh, I was incredibly, incredibly wrong. Um, simple fact: it looks. I've seen this kind of circuit in little um, transistor radios from the sixties, uh, but no, this is uh, well. This is actually rated at 40 watts, which is uh, really <laughs> quite ridiculous. Um, but I've been doing some research on it, and um, as though it is claimed it is actually um, rated at 40 watts, uh, it's not recommended to really run the full 40 watts through it, because apparently when you do, they have a habit of um, going into meltdown. The story I was reading online was that these were the... Um, this. Um, What's it? It's the Z50 was the replacement or an upgrade for a uh, module that they did. There was plug-in replacement called a plug-in different version of this called the Z30, which was rated at um, about 30 watts, and uh, the Z50 was meant to be rated at um, 50 watts. Now, when um, they came to test it, they basically all went into meltdown when they tried driving 50 watts through them. So uh, there was um, the engineers um, basically said no, it's good for about 35 watts, 37 watts, and Sinclair weren't happy with that, and they came with a compromise of 40 watts. <laughs> yes, yeah, so basically um, a lot of these basically melted down because they were driven at what they were um, said they were allowed, they were meant to be driven at, and um, it killed them. Presumably they had some really decent heat sinking on them and what have you, they may have survived a bit better, but uh, yeah, it's actually, like I said, it's actually rated at about um, 40 watts, you know, realistically about 35 watts. Um, apparently if you drive them around the 35 watt mark then they're um, fairly reliable. Uh, the other thing is that uh, I also found out, I mean, a couple of my uh, viewers actually mentioned this as well. They also sent me um, some links to some rather useful sites with this, like uh, Planet Sinclair, which I must admit I had um, literally just been on when um, someone posted me a link to it. Um, this is indeed a um, Sinclair power supply unit. It's not just a transformer, it is actually a power supply unit with the um, smoothing and rect rectification all built in in the bottom there. It's either going to be a PZ6 or a PZ8. Um, the PZ6 is a slightly, has got a slightly lower output voltage. Um, the PZ8 obviously slightly higher. The PZ8 was designed to run um, the Z50 at full power. Um, if you run it with the smaller power supply, you'd run this um, at a lower power. And that's the other thing that I'm going to um, come into. I've Basically, I was trying to find pinouts for this thing, and I couldn't find a um, service book or any, anything on this actual Z50. What I did find, however, was the uh, build manual and um, installation manual for another Sinclair product, which was called the Project 60, which was a full um, stereo amplifier system, or pretty much as much as one as you wanted to make for your application. The idea you could have it as a standalone amplifier or you could build it into a turntable plinth and have it as a record player or whatever you wanted to do with it. And that uh, unit used either the uh, Z30 or the Z50 as its power output modules. And I managed to uh, download a copy of the manual. It's rather long so I've just printed out the bits that I need and basically what I've got on this sheet here is um, all the pinouts so basically we know what all these um, pins on the back here actually do. So we know uh, we've got power supply earth, input earth, driver stage earth, um, a feedback point, we've got um, the actual input, we've got um, an alternative input earth, we've got a um, differential input which is a, just says feedback point, we've got a uh, the positive power supply and then we've got the output. Now the positive power supply, uh, we want something to drive this properly, like I said about the 35 volts, 40 volts, something around there. But what I have found reading um, this um, documentation is this thing will run uh, down to as low as 10 volts. 
and that means that I will actually be able to power it up using my bench power supply at 10 volts it only actually pulls 300 milliamps and outputs around what I was saying around about a watt so we can actually drive this as a really low um, a low powered um, amplifier which is quite nice so for initial testing that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to try and fire this thing up but we're only going to feed it about 12 volts uh, which should give us like I said, perhaps about a watt, watt and a half of um, output um, at least that way we can actually see whether it um, does work alright and then we can dig into some of the rest of this because it is quite interesting I've been basically doing a little, a little bit of electronics archaeology and trying to figure out what we've got here really and what I've found is that basically what the guy who built this did was he took this manual and he took various elements out of it. Um, obviously, like I said, the transformer and the actual power amplifier itself are pure Sinclair. But it looks like what he did is there's um, circuit diagrams in here for a uh, bass treble control circuit and a um, pickup preamp stage circuit. Now, I've had a quick look and I'm pretty sure, I've not looked perfectly yet, but we've got exactly that here that's the um, basically the Sinclair out of the Sinclair manual the treble and um, bass control circuit and that is because it uses two BC 108 transistors and basically we've got here we've got two BC 108 transistors uh, I've not gone through the circuit exactly but just looking at what components are being used here what components are being used down on the um, on the schematic diagram for it here um, yeah he's just copied the circuit out of this manual and used it there so this should it should actually sound pretty good because apparently these um, amps had a fairly they weren't very reliable but when they were working um, they they actually sounded pretty decent. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, without further ado, I think we'll have a go at um, I'll get you down on the uh, on what we're doing again. Um, I think we'll have a go at actually getting this thing to power up. So let's have a look in this um, in this paperwork. That's what we need to see. It shows us which pins are um, what there, and then that shows us uh, what they are. So obviously we're going to have to connect this up to some extent to actually get a um, signal into it. Right, so uh, this is the board that we've got. Um, that one there. So it shows us that, right, that's pin 1 down there. So we know that's pin 1. If we put it that way around like that, then we're right. We can't go um, far wrong with that. Can you see that? Yeah, you can see that, can't you? So we've got pin 1 there as our power supply in. Um, then we've got, um, so that power supply earth, input earth and driver um, stage earth. And I'm looking at things, a lot of things I've seen and um, it shows in some of these circuit diagrams. You just link them three together. So I think we'll do that first. I've got some scrap wire here that I've just um, salvaged from something that will do for testing. So we'll take a uh, we'll take a piece of that. And we are this isn't going to be the permanent wiring for this or anything. This is literally just um while we see what it does. I think I'm just gonna lay it across the uh, three and just tack it on for now. So I do what I, I'll, I'll, if I can find an edge connector that'll fit this I'll probably use it, but I don't know if I have one. that wire up nicely. I think we'll just solder that right across them three like that. So we just want a ground connection for now. Is that our final one soldered? Yeah. That's so we've got a ground. Um, we've got a good ground connection there. Um, what I am going to have to do is I'm going to. Have to I've got a laptop set up with some royalty-free music on it for one, so we don't don't have to worry about the um, copyright police on this. Um, but I will have to connect. I've got a three and a half inch jack here with the um, audio on it. So what I'm actually going to do 
It's a bit of a uh, bit of a cheat, but I'm going to plug that. Cause I haven't got any um, crop clips that I can do this with at the moment. But I'm going to plug that into this um, three, the, the 3.5 inch jack on the front of the unit, and then I can solder some wires just onto there and run them over to the board for the um, signal ground and the. Uh, that will use um, use orange and black for them. Because I think for the most basic setup, we don't need them feedback points or anything. We just need um, signal in, signal out, and uh, give it some um, give it some power. Oh, we need we need a capacitor as well. I'll go into that in a minute. In fact, we can probably use one of them ones with uh, just twist them together a bit to make them neat. wires here. Just tin these up. Oops, you can't see what I'm doing there. There we go. Where's my soldering iron? There's my soldering iron. Move that one out of the way because I don't need that one today. Tinned up very well. Where's my solder gun? There we go. That's better. Right, so we want five as the input, so that's three, four, and five. And um, the next one, I think, is the input ground. So we need to just solder that one on off the input ground, which is that one there. Okay, that's on there. And we'll solder the other end of them to the uh, back of that um, 3.5 inch jack on the um, original unit. Just to... Uh, There we go. And we'll solder these onto the uh, Solder these onto the back of them connections there. So it's only temporary. This is just so we can get a uh, get a signal into it. And hopefully this jack's going to be okay. Now that's that connected. I'll do the same with this one. Don't matter where we solder it. Actually, get that wire out of the way. There we go. That's connected on there, is it? Got a good connection there. Yeah, we've got a good connection there. Right, so we've got a um, signal input from the um, computer plugged into there. Um, we've got um, our ground connected up. We need a positive and we need an output wire. So where's my other wires? We've got a, um, a positive and an output wire here, so... There we go. 
in fact we won't solder um, the output wire straight on there we'll put the positive um, wire on we'll solder these up but the output wire is not going to go straight onto the circuit board I'll show you in a second what we're going to do just tin that up tin that up that needs a little bit more of it there we go right, let's uh, connect up the positive supply that goes to that one there that's connected and then what we need oops you can't see what I'm doing again can you there we go then what we need is a um, something over a thousand UF um, capacitor let's see what we've got in the uh, in the capacitor boxes so 470 that's 100 that's no good that's 220 we need something a thousand or over that's 100 and what this is this is the DC blocking capacitor for the um, speaker and um, basically it will won't like it if you run it without this you risk doing some uh, you risk doing some damage. What's that there? That's not uh that's gonna be it would probably do that actually. See if we've got anything better. That's perfect. Oh no again. Bit low on the voltage rating. Really want something about twenty five volts. And everything I've got that'd do it is ten volts. 10 volts is technically within um, tolerance for what we're actually doing, but I just wanted to have a little bit more, um, a little bit more leeway on it than that. So, or shall we just live dangerously? Let's live dangerously. Only two volts. In fact, no, this should be absolutely fine. It really should be fine. Uh, we've got a um, 3,300 UF at 10 volts here. And what we want to do is we just want to connect the positive uh, basically to the output there. And um, we want to connect the output from that to our speaker wire. So yeah, this will do. So I would like it to have been a slightly higher uh, voltage rating. But we're only running this, we're only feeding like 10 volts, 12 volts into this thing. So... And it should be half the rated voltage of the um, input uh, voltage. So, um, yeah, we're, we're fine with this. Like I said, I would like a slightly larger one, but uh, I mean, we could have used um, the original. That's uh, another mistake I made on the um, last video. Uh, I said where I said that them two um, capacitors that were like that were in parallel. They weren't. Um, one of them appears to be something to do with the. Um, preamp circuit and the other one is actually the um, decoupling for the um, speaker so they used a thousand UF at 63 volts with a probably either a 30 volt or a 45 volt um, input voltage so we're, we're fine with this it is um, it is okay and that's on there so it's only temporary this it's just literally so we can um, try the thing must connect that up that side that's soldered in position yep that's got it right so that's it we've basically got everything we need um, connected up there um, I've got a speaker so this is a 4 ohm speaker I'm pretty sure it's a 4 ohm Yes, it's four ohm speaker I've got. Um, I've seen it in some of my other videos. It's just an old hi-fi speaker. So I will. I don't know if you're going to see this in shot, but I will. Because uh, I'm, uh, I'm struggling for space on my um, workbench. Let's see if we can get it so it's gonna, not going to fall over. What we've got. And we can see. Can you see? We've got a big speaker up there. That's what we're going to be using. Just an old hi-fi speaker. Let's see if we can get you back to the uh, back to the uh, project in hand. Right. So we need to connect that up. We've got um, 
white wire will go to ground so we do need a ground sorry the speaker uh, ground goes to common ground so um, to the power supply so we'll connect that we'll connect that to there like that um, my bench power supply also we will uh, That will also connect its ground to that. I've got a bench power supply here, so we'll connect the ground of the bench power supply to that, like that. I'll put my uh, pliers on that to stop it moving. That'll zoom you out a little bit, just so you can see what's going on a bit more. Um, our positive is nice and easy. We've got our positive here. And that just connects straight to our... Um, that connects straight to our bench power supply there. So we're only going to be feeding about 10 volts into this, so uh, I'll just turn that down to 10 volts there. Might go a little higher than that. Um, our speaker, which is obviously on this brown wire here, goes to the other side of the uh, other side of the speaker. Like that. And that's that connected there. Right, so the speaker's connected. Um, I will actually just disconnect the laptop for the first second because then I can just uh, we'll try plugging that in once we confirm we've got some crackle when I touch that connection there. Um, I'll bring you up a little bit so you can see what's going on. Right, time to switch the um, power supply on. I've got the power supply set to 10 volts, so let's see what uh, happens. Well, we're hearing a pop from the speaker there. That's, uh, That seems to work all right. Let's plug the uh, laptop in and see what we get out of it. But it looks like that little module works. It doesn't seem to like being plugged into my laptop. No, it definitely does not like seem to be plugged into my uh, laptop like that. I wonder if that's not getting a good connection. I wonder if we can just quickly jury, jury rig something. My laptop seems to have gone into uh, sleep, so we're going to have to let the laptop um, fire back up again. Unfortunately. How else can we do this? Uh, let me just get this cable back. But we heard the, um, it definitely works. I wonder if this cable's a bit long and it's just picking up too much um, interference. Fortunately, it does have a break in the middle. So I wouldn't mind just cutting that and um, getting straight into the wires, which I think is what we're going to do. Right, that's more like it. We've got a shorter cable. And I've, uh, I'm going to just tap the wires straight in so we're not using that. Um, that connection on the front because that could be what was causing the issue. Just bear with me a second, I'm just going to uh, do a little bit of bodgery. Right, that's our ground. And we'll just connect the two uh, signals signals together. For a mono input. Right there we go. So all I'm going to do is I'll uh, I'll snip them wires off there. And we'll connect these up and see if we get any um see if we get anything. It is very uh, sensitive to amplifier by the sound of it. Oops. There we go. Right. Let's uh, let's try this again. Let's connect the grounds up. We'll see what happens when I connect the signal up this time. It's still probably very hot. 
better though. We've got a bit of hum there, but we can live with that for uh, for initial testing. Let's see if it'll play some music anyway. Right, uh, we're going to play uh, this Exhilarate. This is by um, Kevin McLeod, and uh, I hope I'm not just murdered that Kevin McLeod. It's uh, some royalty-free music, and I will put a link in the um, description uh, where you can find his stuff. Let's see how this plays. Dear me, that's very, very loud, I will say that. There's a little bit on the distorted side, as you can hear. We haven't changed any of the components in this yet, either. Um, we said we could have an issue with these capacitors. and electricity could have gone. I'm not really expecting these to be particularly hot because um, we're driving the amplifier very uh, to very low rate. I might just just sneak the volume voltage up on the amp a little bit. I'm only going to go up to about 12 volts. Perhaps I try a little bit more um, gain. Let me just try and disconnect. Yeah, uh, it was picking that. I think, in fact, that's probably picking that up from the um, PSU from the laptop. I wonder if we try. I think the battery works in this laptop at least a little bit. So I wonder if we just try um, if I disconnect the PSU for the uh, if I disconnect the PSU for the laptop. And we try it just running on battery, see if that'll eliminate that uh, noise because it sounds like it may be originating from the um, switch mode PSU that the laptop's running. So we'll completely unplug that and we'll just give it another um, we'll give it another quick try now. See if that's made any improvement. So I'll plug that back in. And no. So that laptop now is running completely. So it's literally it's just the uh, processor noise that's picking it up. That's picking up. But we're not using any filtering or anything here. This literally we've got the um, the amp set up as bare bones as we possibly can there. And it was just to prove that the amp actually does function to uh, some extent. And I'm pretty sure. Um, with a really decent speaker, everything set up right, it should actually sound pretty good. Um, what else should we do for today? Uh, well, I think what we'll do, we'll prove that the amp works. I'm going to um, get rid of all my uh, little test wiring on it here now. Like I said, all I wanted to do was just do a quick proof of concept, um, see that the amp does actually function. Um, I probably will change them to electrolytics just for peace of mind because they're uh, these amps. Um, I think they started making the Z50 in 1970 up till about 73 or 74. So you know they're 40 odd year old. Probably get yeah they're, they're getting on for uh, nearly 50 year old them capacitors. So uh, they definitely need uh, they're definitely going to need replacing. So I'll um, like I say I'll. Um, stop on that for now for this video. We've um, proved what I wanted to prove, that the thing does actually um, function anyway. Like I say, it weren't the best of uh, test that because um, it is picking up a lot of um, interference. I mean, the wiring I've got all strewn about on the bench like this to test it's not going to be helping in that respect anyway. Um, in fact, we'll get rid of all this now. Like I said, so, um, we don't need it. We're going to do something better. I really hope I can get a card edge for this. And uh, when we rebuild it, we can rebuild it with a uh, like a plug-in card edge for it.
that's it. Let's just get these off. There we go. Let's tidy that back up. I thought what else would do work I said is just uh, have a look at that um, we'll put that nice and safe now for the time being because so we know that that basically does work like I said we'll just do a bit of um, a bit of preventive maintenance on it um, make sure it's going to be happy the other thing is what the hell am I going to use this thing for I was thinking little signal tracer or something like that but uh, with a 40 watt output on it that's um, that's more than enough uh, <laughs> it's more, more than uh, we're going to need I mean that little test speaker is only rated at about 18 watts and uh, if we drove the, drove, drove the full um, output from this thing through it we'd kill it in um, short order but we'll, we'll come to that um, we'll come to that in the future anyway let's uh, let's zoom you out a little bit oops wrong way and let's have a look at getting this um, getting this out of here and then we can actually examine it properly so we are going to have to do a lot of work, a lot of rebuilding on this um, on this chassis if we do indeed decide we want to uh, utilise it, which I think would be nice. I said it's um, someone a long time ago built this. Um, for what purpose? Unless they just wanted to drive one speaker from um, hi-fi speaker or something like that, it's possible. We'll cut that um, rather nasty wiring away. Like that. Seems a shame to even break that, but uh, we need it gone. There we go. That's the uh, that's the old mains wiring uh, out the way. I'm sure I'll find a use for that. And I'm hoping that we can unscrew this transformer from this. Uh, this is like fuses everywhere that are just <laughs> held held down with one little screw and at least there's two fuses on this thing. That's nice for a amateur built piece of kit that they actually went to the trouble of um, installing fuses. Oops shit. Fortunately that didn't do it too much harm. Note to self, it's going to be a bit uh, top heavy when you've got the transformer up like that. Let's see if we can get this out. try to figure out is where the input is so it's a bit weird because that seems to be the input there um, but it's through a resistor so it's as though they were trying to reduce the mains input into it so yeah this is I think this is our input is um, well, chassis ground by the what looks like, like the way they've done this, but um, that's our input there, which is run through a, through a fuse, uh, not through a fuse, through a resistor. So it obviously weren't taking the full mains um, mains voltage. I may have to um, see if I can unsolder that. This could be tricky. I don't know if this solder now is going to have enough um, thermal mass to get this off. I'll try a bit of extra solder. No, it's going to have nowhere near the amount of thermal mass I'm going to need, I don't think. No chance. 
Well, so that idea is not going to work, I don't think. What I was planning on doing was just seeing if I could, um, because it's just soldered on this one corner on this side. Hope it, what I was hoping to do is just um, heat the solder up and be able to lift the transformer, and then I could get access to the uh, fixings on the other side. But that's not going to, uh, that ain't going to work. I could possibly try getting something to stop the bolt turning on this, the nut turning on this side here, and then see if we can get these to undo. Well, that's working on that one. That's that one out. Let's see if I can do that on the uh, one at the back there. That's working. I think that came off. There we go, that's them two out. So it just gives us a bit of play. I think we're going to have to do the same on this side. Unfortunately, all this lot's in the uh, in the way. Let's try and move as much of this stuff out that we're not going to need. That's interesting. So, I still can't figure out how all this has been wired up and how that's been done. Because that's the, obviously the output, and it goes through this switch. Hmm. So what's that switch? Why would you have a main switch, and then a switch on the um, low tension side? On the low tension DC side, that's a bit odd. We'll desolder it here so we've got some wire to play with after. Right, let's get that out of the way. And that then goes to that fuse down there, which is. Hmm. So it looks like this is loosely based on like half that um, Project 60 stereo amplifier. See, I was only feeding that um, board in 12 volts at the maximum. Uh, that was a hell of a lot of volume we were getting out of it. When I've got, I've got a big, big um, PA speaker down in the set. Well, not a huge PA speaker. It's rated at about, um, probably rated at about 50 watts RMS. So I wonder if we um, have a go with that. At least we're not going to uh, risk blowing the speaker up. I know te technically you're meant to have your amplifier slightly more powerful than your speakers anyway. Um, but I know what I'm doing, I'm careful, so uh, that's not going to be an issue. I might try it on a big um, PA speaker, see what it works like. That's that one out. See what it sounds like um, with that. That's another one of them out. We've just got one more to go. So we can't really get in to uh, get to the screws. Christ knows how I'm going to put them back in. I might have to make new brackets and redo this. I really want to keep the front of this, although I don't like the uh, I don't like the switch that's been used. I might have to come come up with a better switch. But I do quite like the front panel. And I do like the case. So it's got a certain homemade charm about it. I wonder if I can bend that up and out the way for it. To be able to get to that, yeah, I can. I should be able to get to that, um, that final nut in there now. And what I can turn it with. Let's 
struggling getting that last one out. Although that won't turn. Uh, let's disconnect that. We've got a fuse out of the way. Let's see if we can find a better way of getting. Ah! Aha! Now I can get to it. Let's get that disconnected from there as well. That's our uh, negative connection, uh, well, our neutral connection for the mains in. Well, let's just cut it. It won't desold us cleanly, so uh, let's snip that. Right. I'd expect that, few, that resistor there to have been for the neon. I wonder if that was a bit of a, a hodge, but hodge up on the wiring. They end up going in there, or unless this transformer was given too many volts out, and that's what they decide how they decide to drop it. Could well be. Hopefully, we can get this out now. I'm interested to know which one it is. This, whether it's the uh, PZ6 or PZ8. That's the transport, that's it out. Let's get that out of the way for now. There we go, that's the um that's the transformer unit. And it's a PZ6. That's good. So that means that this is the lower powered um version. This only gives out about 30 volts. Unlike the PZ8, like I said, which gave out um I think it was 45 volts, which um killed them mod that's probably why this module still works, because it's never been um, driven at its full um it's full power. A lot of these components were actually quite old when this was made by the look of it. I've just noticed that the capacitor um, in the back of here, these are um, dated, uh, I think these were dated 63 when I looked. Why did these not have a date on them? No, perhaps these didn't have a, no they're 63 volts these. Um, but the uh, I think the um, mains transformer in here is also rated at um, yeah it is um, 47th week of 63 that's a thousand UF at 60 volts unfortunately I don't think I oh, might be able to get this board out of here and have a look at it Incidentally, I was looking at these power supplies because you could buy these power. You could basically buy all these parts um, separately from um, Sinclair, depending on what project you were doing. And um, Sinclair really did cheap out. Um, you bought it was about five pounds, I think, five five or six pounds for the um, power supply, but that didn't include the transformer. You had to buy that from um, Radio Spares. Apparently that is a stock radio spares um, replacement transformer. So your five pound basically got you everything apart from the most expensive part. Can we lift this out? Or do we have to take it all out as one? Um, one yeah. Ooh. I didn't really want to have to dismantle it that far. Let's, uh, let's see if we can get the transformer out. See if that'll get us in there. to get this whole uh, kit and caboodle out of here and have a look at it. Mm. Oh right, no, you have to take that one out as well, bloody hell. Mm. 
It does appear to it so be that there's a little bit more to this uh, power supply than I was expecting as well. I think we have a bit of regulation in here. There we go. Right, so we've got yeah, a couple of transistors. Um, we've got a uh, little bridge rectifier there. Oh, look, more transistors. So we've got one, two, three, four transistors, a bridge rectifier, a little trimmer pot, which is presumed for setting the um, exact output voltage. Big smoothing cap, and that's pretty much it. Let's, uh, we'll put this thing back together, and we might um, if we can find my safe block. Um, we might have a go at um, powering it up and just measuring what the output uh, what the output voltages on it are. So at least help us in the future once it makes sure this thing's working all right, and then we can uh, then we can think about reusing it. Plus it is quite a cool thing to have in a Sinclair collection. I'd really like something like one of them um, Project 60 amplifiers. Complete uh, complete setup. I did see another one of these uh, them Z50 um, output modules on um, eBay but the guy wanted like £20 for it. And I'm... Um, nah. I'm... Um, if I can pick something up for a little bit of something, fair enough, but I'm sure they're worth that. I'm sure there's um, Sinclair aficionados out there that would be more than happy to pay, um, more than happy to pay £20 for one, but um, not me. I've got one. So it just would be quite cool to be able to have a, uh, a complete... Project 60 setup. Is there any problem when you take something apart? Just have a look. You've then got the problem putting it all back together. So I presume these were also used to power the um, preamp module. I think the preamp module, from what I read, um, it needs between 22 and 30 odd volts to run. So uh, I presume it could share its um, supply with uh, with this. I wonder if the larger one that gives like a 45 volt um, output has a separate output to power the preamp. Not sure about that. I'll have to have a look at that. Right, so it's back together. We can um, we can probably give it some volts and see what we get out there and see if it does actually um, work all right. I just need to find my safe lock to uh, do this safely. Just, uh, let's see if we can find what I've done with it. What have I done with my safe block? Right, well I can't find my safe block so shall let's do it the other way where um, we don't do it quite so safely but yeah. Right, big disclaimer here, do as I say, not as I do, use a safe block, don't do this.
don't take your wires and put them in the end of a figure of eight connector. Make sure we've got a nice bit of wire there that's going to actually uh, get us a good connection. Like, like that. So never do what you see me doing now, ever. Until you've not got a safe block and you need to make connection to some mains power. Right, so we'll plug that in, but at the moment we will not switch it on. Alright, so that's plugged in. And that goes to these um, crocodile clips. And what we're going to do, we're going to be very, very safe. Make sure we've got nothing um, in the way. We will uh, strip, that, strip that wire there. And that is the negative or neutral, which we will plug in like that. And we'll take the uh, positive clip. Remember, I've not got anything, it's plugged in, but it is not switched on at the moment. And we will connect that to this side of the fuse. So we do still have that fuse in, in circuit, like that there. We will then, um, I've got my meter up here. Oops. My bench meter will power my bench meter up. We'll set that to voltage. We'll set that to DC. And we'll set it to 100 because we are expecting around 30 volts here. We will connect. I believe this side was um, the one that went to the ground. So we'll connect that to uh, connect that side there to the ground. And we've got this probe here and we can probe uh, the output voltage like that and we can have a look on the um, we can have a look on the meter there what it's giving out so we'll do that now I, in fact I will leave you up on the meter um, I will switch on um, I'll probe the um, output voltage and we'll see whether this thing's actually um, giving us an output so let's uh, switch on uh, we'll probe the um, output voltage and there we go we've got that's okay that's 34.7 um, I think it said around between 30 and 35 volts so uh, yeah we're absolutely fine there we do have a good working um, power supply I'll switch that off now and we'll get you back down on the um, on the bench so we've proved we do have a working output module We've only been able to run it at a, um, a low voltage up to now. So we've only put a maximum of 12 volts into it. And um, really it will be much happier with the 35 volts that the mains power supply is actually um, producing. So um, I think in the next video we'll probably... Um, I'll change these capacitors on here. And I think well, actually what we'll do is we'll put these two pieces to one side. Because we've already um, ascertained that we're happy with them. And we will have a look at this. Um, we'll have a. Let me just move them cables out of the way so you can't see because of them. We will have a look at um, the preamp section that's been built on here and see if it actually works. We'll have a go, perhaps tidying some of this up as well, um, and see how we can uh, rebuild this thing into a usable little um, unit. So anyway, I'm going to leave it there for now. I um, hope you enjoyed this little update on the project. So. Uh, Thanks for watching and goodbye.